This is very similar to spindle trees that we're growing in the Pacific Northwest and uh, actually some of these systems were developed uh, in uh, other parts of the world such as Germany and so we've been doing this for some time. We've been talking about how how this system in particular is a front-loaded system. You're putting a lot of work, a lot of effort in the first couple of years. You've got these branches tied down here. It takes extra time, um, extra money to do that, but I, I really like what I'm seeing here. You've got some, you've got some more horizontal branches. Uh, this one's coming out at, at 90 degree angle. That's, that's okay. I prefer just a little bit of a, of a rise on this. Just keep the vigor up. I'd like to get about two feet of new growth on the, on the ends of all these branches and that's about what we're at, where we're at on, these, uh, on, on this tree here. And I think that's about perfect. So I really like the amount of vigor that I see in this, in this tree. Um, what happens though is that after a, about the uh, going into the third, the fourth leaf, what you'll find is that you start putting less time, less, less effort into these trees. And by the time these trees are mature, they're one of the fastest trees to prune. And so even though you're putting extra time in at the beginning developing this tree, by the time this is a mature tree, our, our pruners are finding that they can get through a, a um, uh, a spindle tree like this, a spindle tree orchard like this in about half the time that they can in some of the other systems that we're, that we're using, some of the steep leader or even the KGB uh, systems that we're using out there. And so it's front loaded. Um, our growers started to, to, to use this uh, system a number of years ago. But we've got, we've got big orchards. Most of my growers have 200 acres, 400 acres of just cherries. And so they found it too cumbersome in the first couple of years, and they've, they've backed away from it. They like the KGB that's really simple up front. You spend very little time initially establishing the, the, the trees, but you put a little bit more time in when it's mature because you have all of these uprights. So every, every upright has to be dealt with with a KGB system. This, we're going to do uh, just very little pruning on this right now because this thing is just coming into production and the fact that this is Regina, I don't want to, I don't want to dis disrupt the, uh, the flowers that, that, are, that are coming on this. I want this to, to flower more. Uh, Regina has a very short ovule longevity, which means that you just don't get a whole lot of fruit, even though you have masses of flowers on, on the tree. So the more flowers we have, the better. If I prune this too hard at this stage, I'm going to just cut back on the amount of flowers I have, and so we'll just, we'll just keep, it, uh, keep a light pruning on, on a tree like this that's just coming into production. So what we've got then is, uh, is a number of really nice branches here. I've got upright here. I don't really want that, but I'd like to stay, keep those flowers because we'll get our best quality, flower, our best quality fruit from these axillary, axillary buds down here. This is what Greg was mentioning earlier. These are going to be our largest cherries, our firmest cherries, and our sweetest cherries that are grown off of these these buds at the base of one-year-old wood. That's what's so nice about this SSA system is that's the only fruit that you have is are, are those big cherries at the base of the one-year-old wood. You cut everything off. Everything else is, is, is removed. So the spur the spur flowers or the spur fruit, which tend to be just a little bit smaller, you don't even deal with that with the SSA. And um, we can take advantage of that type of fruit on even this system. By any time we have an upright like that, we'll just cut it back and uh, we'll take the fruit off of it, but we won't, this will be very temporary. Next year we'll, we'll, we'll prune that off and, and remove it. So there's a couple of opportunities like that where we have chance to, um, to take advantage of that type of fruit there. Um, coming over here, I'll probably just uh, allow this branch to, to remain here and take that off there. I want to uh, single out some of these. This would be nice if this were down a little bit further, but it's not. It, it should be okay for a while. Eventually I'll want to come in here and stub this back and get this a little bit uh, more horizontal because it's it's going to be a very strong um, 
competitor, I'm afraid, at this, at this angle. But we can leave this for another year or two, and then something's going to have to be dealt with it. it looks By, like that was tied down with the tie broke. Yeah, right, exactly. And so we've got, it, we've got a little bit more upright than what we really would like it to be. Um, Regina uh, branches fairly readily, so we may get a, a, a branch off here that we can use in a year or two, and we'll just cut back to it and have another branch come out. If we don't get that, we can stub it off, and we can take what we get, get from there. So we'll just have to wait and see. Um, I think I would like to, because this is so strong, I'm going to cut this back to a weaker side branch there like that so that I don't... Uh, have so much competition. Okay, so then uh, up here we've got some nice we've got some nice branches here that are filling in quite nicely. The top you said you want this a maximum of seven feet tall. Somewhere in there. Seven, seven eight feet. So so you, you you like this mostly a pedestrian orchard then. That's what I'd like to do. Right? Yeah. Okay. So. Okay, this is the strongest branch right here. A little bit, uh, if we're gonna keep this at seven, eight feet, I'd like it to start slowing down at the top. So I'm gonna cut that off because it is stronger. We'll take this then as our, as our uh, new leader. These branches here are, are pretty strong. So I'm gonna take that off, take that off there. And there may be some new branches. Here's a, well, I've got a uh, vegetative bud right there that will come out and uh, probably probably remove that there as well. So now if this were if this were another variety such as uh, Sweetheart or Lappins, another uh, a, a more productive variety, I would go and I would uh, tip all of these these branches here. But the fact that that it is a um, uh, Regina, I'm just going to tip these branches that I want to continue to extend the, the growth of the, of, the, uh, of the side branches here. This I want to stiffen this up a little bit, so I'm going to do that. And, uh, and basically that's, that's all I'm going to do on this, on this tree. So, thing that I'd like to um, mention that I really like what Rodney did, and this is in contrast with some things we saw yesterday. <clears throat> so those of you that weren't there, uh, I'll describe it. Grower that had young trees, uh, probably a year younger than this tree, um, was letting the branch grow out, grew out the, the, actually the year of planting. So he planted the nursery tree, he had a nice branch that grew out, several of them in fact, and grew out. And then going into the next year, he, he had left it alone. He said, well, I want it to get nice and long, and I want it to fruit up and the fruit to start to pull it down. So he had this one very narrow channel here of fruit, and this, a potential fruit, and a narrow, very narrow channel there. What Rodney did was he came in and he headed that at, uh, after it grew the first year, so going into the second year. And by doing that, look, he's spreading out his potential fruiting area. So he's got more potential fruiting area he will have in another year than if he had just left this go long. And by making that heading cut, he removed <clears throat> the last bit of growth where the, the, the growing points slow down and they get more compacted as the growth slows down. And that then becomes, two years after that, that shoot forms, that becomes heavy, thick clusters of fruit because they're very dense. And so by, by making a heading cut to remove that last bit of terminal growth, which is what Lynn was doing on a lot of these, you're removing those dense clusters and you're leaving the remaining spurs spaced out a little bit more nicely. So there's a two-fold thing. You're reducing the future crop load and you're increasing the future leaf area by stimulating these laterals. So I, I like that, Rodney, because that was a big contrast yeah. between what we saw yesterday. And, and if you're growing, again, if you're growing a, a productive variety such as Lappins or Sweetheart or Chelan, you'll, you'll do that with all of the of the of the branches because if you don't do that you get a mass of, of of fruit up here and you'll get more fruit down here and the 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 tree will stop growing then and you just can't have that so 
So uh, we don't see any good example of it on here. We may see it as we get into Yeah, the we probably will. But uh, it's, it's really important that, that you, you tip these branches in order to, to reduce the amount of fruit on these Gisela rootstocks. With Regina, it's not quite as important because you, you don't have that, that potential for oversetting, but you certainly do with a lot of these other varieties. And with, with a Gisela rootstock or any of these productive rootstocks, really what you need to be thinking in the back of your mind when you're pruning these things all the time is how do I reduce the amount of fruit on, on this uh, tree? And I know that that's counter to how most growers want to think because they think, oh, well, look at all the, all the fruit. I can make a lot of money off of that. But you only make money off of good quality fruit. And if you've got massive fruit, that's not going to do you any good. So we've got to grow good quality fruit in order to make the real money. Then would you do anything with that uh, leader for stimulating any lateral branches or just Well, the fact that it's the fact that this is Regina and it tends to branch fairly easily I, and he's he's talking about this being uh, he'd like to keep this seven eight feet tall. Well, so where are we? So we're already at eight feet. So I didn't want to stimulate that um, that that branch and so I've, I've left it. It'll fruit up, it'll slow that down a little bit. And you'll, we will, we should get some branching off of that because it's Regina. Uh, if it had been Bing or some some other varieties that don't, that doesn't branch real well, uh, you you may not get a whole lot of branching. But uh, I left it because one, it was Regina, and two, because you said you wanted this maximum height of seven eight feet. It's already there. You're saying as opposed to doing what? As opposed to tipping it, as opposed to tipping it. Right. Yeah. Would you? I wouldn't tip it either. Yeah. So I think it's it's good to let those terminals go even above eight feet. Yeah. As the rest of the tree fills in. Right. As the rest of the tree fills in, then you, you can come back and limit that. Yeah. Up. But I was wondering if you would uh, consider using promelin on that uh, leader to get branches. Well, I'd say in general. Yeah. Whether yeah. it's Regina or something yeah. else, or or the bud removal that we had. Talked about. The bud removal r works really well. Um, I've I've seen this. This is a this is something that was uh, uh, pioneered by Greg when he was at Washington State University. Uh, we saw it a lot when Greg was here. I haven't seen it so much since Greg has left because uh, we've gone in different directions. But it, it does work really well. And I'll let I'll let Greg show you how that's done because it would be good for this. We would more likely in in Oregon or even Washington now because like I said Greg has kind of moved on and, and we've we've focused on other things we would more likely treat this with promelin which has the added benefit of stimulating more more flower production early so if you use promelin you get a, a, a additional precocity because of the use of the of the chemical and there's a couple of ways of doing that. You, you do this at, uh, at green tip, but you can make a, a scoring notch and paint the promelin into the notch, or you can use a, a product called uh, Pentrabark, or there's a Wilburellis product called um, something seal, I can't think of it. It's a, it's a surfactant anyway, that, that actually takes the promelin through the bark and you don't have to make the, the notches. And what that does is it, it eliminates the potential for bacterial canker uh, pseudomonas getting into that wound. And so it makes it really simple. You just have to, you just have to band the promelin and the pentrabark in this area, 12 inches down, you do it again, 12 inches down, you do it again. And this whole area will, will it'll stimulate branching in this whole region here. And plus you get the added benefit of the additional precocity from that. Yeah, uh, the promelin tends to create very weak branches. Very flat. Those will have flowers at the base of those branches. Right, right. But uh, w the cherry naturally wants to grow strongly at the highest point of its growth. Well, I think we've talked about this in years past. Cherry is a nursery, I mean is a forest tree. So it needs to compete in a forest environment and compete for shade and light. So it grows tall as fast as it can in the next year. Its strongest growth is up here to create shade and shade out the competition below while that terminal extends. So as we try to make pedestrian orchards, we want to change the whole way the cherry tree tries to grow. So knowing that these buds are going to be the strongest, the top four or five, we remove those. 
And so we've eliminated the ones that want to be the strongest. Now these are still going to want to be relatively strong since they're the next ones left. So we can remove one, two, or three, leave one that direction, leave one this direction. And I'll take two away, leave one that direction, take two away, leave one that direction, take three away, leave one here. There's, there's no magic number of three of four, two of three, or whatever. What you want to do is try to orient the buds to grow out so you have a nice world pattern down the tree. And you can do this with a nursery tree. It works best on, on last year's growth. So a nursery tree is last year's growth. Or the second year in the orchard when you've got another extension of four feet, you can do it on that top four feet. And that will generate uh, buds to grow just about everywhere you leave one. You're removing 60, or you're removing more like 70 to 85 percent of the buds, and the remaining few buds that are there will grow because the tree wants to push something out and grow. So I've got them spaced around pretty nicely here, something like that. So I'd end up hopefully with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight branches on this segment, plus the terminal growing intact.